A very good afternoon. You're watching the midday news on Rajya Sabha Television. First up, the headlines. Justice uh, Pinaki Chandra Ghosh uh, sworn in as the uh, first Lokpal of India. President Ramnath Kovind administers oath of office. Vice President, Prime Minister, and Chief Justice of India attend ceremony. BJP releases a fresh list of 36 candidates for Lok Sabha polls. Sambit Patra to contest from Puri. Congress list fields Raj Babbar from Fatehpur Sikri instead of Muradabad. Congress also announces a list of 54 candidates for Odisha Assembly polls. NDA announces candidates for 39 out of 40 Lok Sabha seats in Bihar. Ravi Shankar Prasad to contest from Patna Sahib. BJP also names many of its sitting MPs. Prime Minister Modi pays tribute to Ram Manohar Loya on his birth anniversary. Says Loya would have been proud of NDA government's policies. PM's blog targets opposition for betraying his principles. Parliamentarians pay floral tributes to Loya at Central Hall. And Malaysia hosts the 28th Sultan Aslan Shah Cup 2019. Team India to take on Asian Games medalist Japan in the opening match today. Teams to watch out for are Japan, Korea and hosts Malaysia. The top story this afternoon, Justice Sapinaki Chandra Ghosh took oath as the first Lokpal of India today. President Ramnath Kovind administered oath of office to Justice Ghosh as the Lokpal chairperson. Lokpal, having been appointed chairperson Lokpal, do swear in the name of God, do swear in the name of God, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the constitution of India, as by law established, that I will bear true faith and alliance to the Constitution of India as by law established, that I will uphold the sovereignty and integrity of India, that I will uphold the sovereignty and integrity of India, that I will duly and faithfully and to the best of my ability, knowledge and judgment, that I will duly and faithfully and to the best of my ability, knowledge and judgment perform the duties of my office without fear or favor, affection or ill will. Perform the duties of my office without fear or favor, affection or ill will. And that I will uphold the constitution and the laws. And that I will uphold the constitution and the laws. Vice President Avankia Naidu, Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Chief Justice of India Ranjan Gogoi were also present at the swearing-in ceremony. Former Supreme Court Judge Justice Pinaki Chandra Ghosh was appointed as the country's first Lokpal, the anti-corruption ombudsman on 19th of March. The appointments were recommended by Prime Minister Modi-led selection committee and approved by President Kovind. The Lokpal and Lokayukt Act, which envisages the appointment of a Lokpal at the centre and Lokayuks in the states to look into cases of corruption against certain categories of public servants, was passed in 2013. And now let's get you all the news on upcoming elections. First up, news from Bihar, where the NDA in the state announced its candidates for 39 out of the total 40 Lok Sabha seats in the state today. Union Minister Ravi Shankar Prasad will contest from Patna Sahib, which was represented earlier by Shatrugan Sinha. BJP has also given ticket to most of its uh, sitting MPs, including Agriculture Minister Radha Mohan Singh, Ram Kripal Yadav, Rajiv Pratap Rudi and Rajkumar Singh. Lok Jan Shakti Party State President uh, Pashupati Kumar Paras will be replacing his elder brother Ram Vilas Paswan in Hajipur. The Union Minister is uh, likely to get a Rajya Sabha ticket. Chirag Paswan will be seeking a re-election from Jamoi. Remember, Bihar will see polling in seven phases. Uh, the counting of votes will take place on 23rd of May. 
पटना साहिब श्री रविशंकर प्रसाद जी अभी वर्तमान में केंद्रीय मंत्री हैं भारतीय जनता पार्टी 31 पाटलिपुत्र श्री रामकृपाल यादव वर्तमान में केंद्रीय मंत्री हैं भारतीय जनता पार्टी से 32 आरा श्री राजकुमार सिंह अभी केंद्रीय मंत्री हैं भारतीय जनता पार्टी 33 बक्सर श्री अश्वनी कुमार चौबे भारतीय जनता पार्टी के केंद्रीय मंत्री हैं वरिष्ठ नेता हैं चौतीस सासाराम श्री छेदी पासवान भारतीय जनता पार्टी पैंतीस काराकाट श्री महाबली सिंह जनता दल यूनाइटेड And earlier, the BJP released a fresh list of 36 candidates for Lok Sabha polls yesterday, which included 23 nominees for Andhra Pradesh, where polling would be held in the first phase on 11th of April. The list, announced late on Friday night, also contained the names of six candidates for Maharashtra and five for Odisha, and one candidate each for Assam and Meghalaya. BJP national spokesperson Sambit Patra will contest the general election from Puri parliamentary constituency in Odisha. The party had released its first list of 184 candidates on Thursday which confirmed that Prime Minister Narendra Modi will be seeking a re-election from Varanasi his parliamentary seat. Meanwhile the BJP also released a second list of its candidates for the assembly elections in Andhra Pradesh and Odisha. The list contains the names of 51 candidates for Andhra Pradesh. and 22 candidates for Odisha. News from the Congress's camp, the party on Friday released a list of its 35 candidates for the Lok Sabha election. The party, uh, in fact, uh, shifted uh, Uttar Pradesh State Unit Chief Raj Babbar from Muradabad to Fatehpur Sikri. The party has uh, also nominated uh, Imran Pratap Grahi from uh, Muradabad, uh, where uh, Babbar's candidature was announced earlier. The party also fielded uh, former Union Minister Renuka Chaudhary from Khamam in Telangana. The party also fielded uh, Vikram Aditya Singh, uh, the son of former Union Minister Karan Singh uh, from Udhampur constituency in Jammu. The Congress also released a list of 54 candidates for Odisha Assembly election yesterday. News from Uttar Pradesh now, where the BSP or the Bahujan Samaj, Rawadi, Bahujan Samaj Party released its first list of candidates for the Lok Sabha polls on Friday. Now, the party has named 11 candidates in the first list. The BSP has fielded a former JDS General Secretary, Kumar Danish Ali from Amroha. Ali had joined the BSP only last week. Remember, Mayawati's BSP is contesting 38 of the 80 Lok Sabha constituencies in Uttar Pradesh under a seat-sharing agreement with the Samajwadi Party as well as the Rashtriya Lok Dal or the RLD. News from Maharashtra, the Shiv Sena on Friday also declared its first list of 21 candidates in the state for Lok Sabha elections. And in this list, the party has retained 17 sitting MPs. And as per the pre-poll alliance, the BJP will contest on 25 seats and Shiv Sena will contest on 23 out of the 48 Lok Sabha constituencies in Maharashtra. And of these 23 seats, the Uddhav Thakre-led party has announced candidatures on 21 of these seats. Remember, in 2014, the Shiv Sena had contested on 21. 20 Lok Sabha seats in the state and it had won 18 of them. Shiva Sena Bhajapa ki umidwaron ki jo suchi hai jari kar di hai gai hai. Teish jaga Shiva Sena lad rahi hai. Us mein se 21 umidwaron ki suchi aaj jahir ho chuki hai. Do umidwar abhi hum ghoshit karna baaki hai. Ek palgar or satara. Ye dono namun ki ghoshna do dino mein ho sakta hai revivar ko ye jahir ho jahi hai. Let's get to some other news. The first up news from Jammu and Kashmir where a total of eight terrorists along with a civilian have been killed in four separate encounters in the last 24 hours at separate places in Jammu and Kashmir. Two Lashkar-e Toiba terrorists were killed in a fierce gunfight with the security forces in Bandipura district on Friday. 
One of the terrorists killed in the encounter in the district's Hajin area was identified as Pakistan-based L.E.T. commander Ali Bhai. A 10-year-old boy who was held as a hostage was also killed in the encounter. Two more terrorists were killed in an encounter in a Shopian district's Ratnipura area on Friday. The security forces had holed up several militants inside a house in Ratnipura. A team of a special operations group and 34 Rashtriya rifles of the CRPF were carrying out a cordon and search operation in the area. And in Sopur's uh, Warpura area, also security forces killed another terrorist after a gunfight on Friday. Meanwhile, as a precautionary measure, uh, internet services have been snapped in Shopia and Sopur, while in other parts of South Kashmir, it has been reduced to 2G. All the educational institutions have been closed in Sopur. And early on Thursday, also two Jaish e Mohammed terrorists were killed in an encounter with the security forces at uh, Kalatara in uh, Baramula district. While three security force personnel, including an officer, suffered injuries uh, during the operation. And in a major breakthrough, the Delhi police has arrested uh, top Jaish e Mohammed operative Sajid Khan. Now he has been uh, sent to custody till uh, 29th of March by a Delhi court. 27 year old Sajid Khan, uh, uh, who is a resident of uh, Pulwama, was arrested from the Red Fort area late last night. Now, Sajid Khan is a close aide of Pulwama attack mastermind Mudassir Ahmed Khan, who is believed to have been killed in an encounter on 11th of March. The police said that Sajid Khan was in contact with Mudassir Ahmed Khan and also Pakistani terrorist Yasir via an app using fake numbers. He was taken, uh, in fact, he was tasked by Mudassir with establishing a sleeper cell in the national capital. Sajid Khan moved to Delhi before the Pulwama attack that killed 40 CRPF Jawans in Jammu and Kashmir on 14th of February. More news from Jammu and Kashmir. The Yasin Malik-led Jammu Kashmir Liberation Front or JKLF has been banned by the Union government. Now, according to Home Ministry, the party was banned for a series of violent acts and being in the forefront of the separatist activities in the militancy hit state since 1988. The organization has been named in 37 FIRs and is being investigated in several cases by Jammu and Kashmir Police as well as the National Investigation Agency or the NIA. Union Home Secretary Rajiv Gobba said that JKLF was a ban following government's zero tolerance policy against terrorism. Yasin Malik is under arrest and at present lodged in a Jammu jail. Now, this is the second organization in Jammu and Kashmir to be banned this month. Earlier, the center had banned Jamaat e Islami Jammu and Kashmir as well. JKLF Yasin faction as an unlawful association under the Section 31 of the Unlawful Activities Prevention Act 1967. This is in accordance with the policy of zero tolerance against terrorism, which is being followed by the central government. <coughs> government is committed to relentlessly pursuing the policy of curbing the activities of secessionist organizations, which are a threat to unity and integrity of the country. The National Investigation Agency and Enforcement Directorate are taking strong action against these organizations. More news from Jammu and Kashmir. The Enforcement Directorate has slapped a penalty of 14.4 lakh rupees against Jammu and Kashmir-based separatist Syed Ali Shah Gilani. Now, the ED has uh, also ordered confiscation of uh, Forex of uh, $10,000, which is nearly 6.8 lakh, in connection with the FEMA case. The case pertains to Gilani in illegal possession of foreign exchange. Now, the case is being investigated by the Enforcement Directorate under the Foreign Exchange Management Act or the FEMA. The case was taken up by the ED on the basis of a complaint lodged by Income Tax Department against Syed Ali Shah Gilani. A similar proceeding against another separatist, Yasin Malik, who is the former chairman of a JKLF, 
is also underway. And the government has boycotted Pakistan National Day that is being marked today. Pakistan Day is uh, celebrated to mark the Lahore Resolution on 23rd of March each year. While Islamabad will celebrate the day today, the Pakistani High Commission in New Delhi had organized events yesterday. India, however, did not send any representatives to the event as the separatists from Jammu and Kashmir were also invited. Now, Indian diplomats in the Indian High Commission in Islamabad also will not attend the Park National Day celebrations. Foreign Ministry spokesperson Ravish Kumar said that the decision was taken after Pakistan High Commission decided to invite Hurriyat leaders to the reception. He added that in February, we were very clear that any attempt by Pakistan High Commission or Pakistani leadership to engage with the Hurriyat leaders or the separatist leaders will not be taken lightly. Now, none of the separatists from Kashmir, however, attended the event this year as most of them are either in jail or under house arrest after a major crackdown by the government last month. The ones who are not jailed fear their arrest or another crackdown. Meanwhile, Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan said on Friday that Prime Minister Narendra Modi sent him greetings on the eve of Pakistan's National Day. This time, चूंकि पाकिस्तानी हाई कमीशन ने डिसाइड किया और जैसा मैंने कहा उन्होंने डिसाइड किया हुरियत रिप्रेजेंटेटिव्स को इनवाइट करने के लिए हमने डिसाइड किया उसके बेसिस पे उनके इनवाइट के बेसिस पे कि हम इस साल कोई भी रिप्रेजेंटेटिव पाकिस्तान हाई कमीशन में उनके रिसेप्शन के लिए नहीं भेजेंगे इन मिड डे न्यूज विल टेक अ वेरी शॉर्ट ब्रेक आई विल बी राइट बैक विद मोर न्यूज डोंट गो एनीवेयर Ramnath Kovind today paid a tribute uh, to socialist leader Ram Manohar Lohia on his birth anniversary today. In a Twitter message, Ramnath Kovind said that uh, Lohia dedicated his life to the quest for a just, fair and equal society and he remains an inspiration for welfare-oriented governance. Vice President M. Venkia Naidu also paid a tribute to Lohia. In a Twitter message, he said that Loya was a leading figure of the freedom struggle and he took active part in Quit India movement. He was an iconic socialist leader, nationalist and scholar, unquote. Parliamentarians also paid uh, floral tributes to Loya at uh, the Central Hall of Parliament. And Prime Minister Narendra Modi also paid a tribute to Ram Manohar Lohia on the occasion of his birth anniversary today. In a blog titled Remembering Dr. Lohia, PM Modi said that freedom fighter socialist leader Lohia would have been very proud of the NDA government's policies. He said that the NDA government was following Lohia's thoughts and ideals with programs such as the PM Kisan Samman Nidhi, Krishi Sanchai Yojana, Soil Health Cards and more. The Prime Minister also launched a scathing attack at the opposition who are attempting to ally with the Congress, saying that they have betrayed Loya's principles. Targeting the Congress party, the PM also quoted Loya as saying that during the Congress regime, neither agriculture nor industry and nor the army has improved. 
And the Shaheed Divas or the Martyrs Day is being celebrated today as a tribute to martyrs Bhagat Singh, Sukhdev and Rajguru. Vice President M. Venkia Naidu paid tributes to all the three on the day of their martyrdom. In a Twitter message, he said that the country will never forget their valour and unthinkable commitment to freeing the country from the British rule. He also added that their patriotism and acts of sacrifice will continue to inspire every Indian at all times. Prime Minister Narendra Modi also paid a tribute sir, to all the three freedom fighters. In a Twitter message, he said that India is proud that these great men belong to our land. The PM also uploaded a video playing homage to all the three. Shaheed Bhagat Singh uh, was an Indian uh, socialist revolutionary who became a martyr at the age of 23. He still remains an inspiration for a million people. He is considered uh, one of the most uh, influential revolutionaries of the Indian independence movement. He sacrificed his life for the country and 16 years after his death, India got freedom. Bhagat Singh, Sukhdev and Rajguru fought for the freedom of our country from the colonial rulers and sacrificed their lives on 23rd of March 1931 when they were hanged to death by the British. Since then, every year, 23rd of March is observed as Martyrs Day, also known as Shaheed Divas. On to some other news now. The government has exceeded its disinvestment target for the current fiscal by 5,000 crore rupees. Finance Minister Arun Jaitley announced this on Friday that the disinvestment receipts have touched 85,000 crore rupees as against a target of 80,000 crore rupees for the disinvestment for the current year. On to some other news now. Jet Airways has suspended operations on as many as 13 more international routes till end of April. Now, this after it grounded seven more planes due to the non-payment of rentals, taking the total number of such aircrafts to 54. Besides, the airline has also reduced frequencies on seven other overseas routes, mostly from Delhi and Mumbai. The company said that it is actively engaged with all its uh, aircraft uh, lessers and is regularly providing them with all the updates uh, on the efforts taken to improve the liquidity. Grasping for funds uh, and no bailout on the horizon, Jet Airways has now reduced its operations to one-fourth from over 600 daily flights uh, earlier, with just one-third of its 119 fleet being operational. All the international news now. Syria has condemned U.S. President Donald Trump's declaration that Washington will recognize Israel's sovereignty over the disputed Golan Heights, calling the statement as irresponsible. Syrian Foreign Ministry statement said that Donald Trump's comments confirm the blind bias of the United States. It added that Donald Trump's statement won't change the fact that Golan Heights was and will remain Arab and Syrian. Donald Trump's announcement... Uh, at the day before was a major shift in American policy and gives Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu a political boost a month before elections. The administration has been considering recognizing Israel's sovereignty over the strategic highlands which Israel occupied from Syria in 1967. For some time, and Netanyahu had pressed the matter with the visiting U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo this week. News from China now, where the death toll in the powerful explosion at a chemical plant has now climbed to 64 as a number of people succumbed to their injuries. Over 600 people have been injured in the blast. Emergency crews continue to work at the site of a deadly explosion. The incident occurred on Thursday following a fire in a fertilizer factory in a chemical industrial park in Jiangsu province. According to media reports, the executives of the chemical plant uh, province have been taken into police custody now. Chinese President Xi Jinping has ordered that the cases of accidents uh, must be probed and he has uh, asked for an early probe so that the cause of accident can be identified.
News from Africa, where a week after the flooded uh, Mozambique uh, parts of uh, Biera was uh, hit by Cyclone Idai. Now, cases of cholera have been recorded. The International Federation of Red Cross as well as the Red Crescent Societies uh, have warned of uh, many other outbreaks as well, already noting that uh, there is an increase in the number of cases of malaria. The storm has so far killed 557 people across Mozambique, Zimbabwe and Malawi, but the death toll is expected to rise. Idai made a landfall near Bera with the, speeds, uh, the wind speeds up to 177 kilometers uh, per hour on 14th of March. Aid workers are uh, slowly delivering relief, uh, but the conditions are said to be extremely difficult with uh, some of the areas completely inaccessible and there is a scarcity of helicopters as well. Some 1.7 million people are said to be affected across South of Africa with either no electricity or running water, and especially in areas that have been swept away or the roads are really destroyed by the floods. Sports news now. The 28th Sultan Aslan Shah Cup is set to begin from today in Malaysia. The opening match will be played between India and Asian Games gold medalist Japan. Now, India will try to make most of this year's Aslan Shah Cup as they finished fifth in the last edition of the tournament. India have won the title five times. Australia, that clinched the last year's Sultan Aslan Shah Cup title, is not playing in this edition of the tournament. The number of teams in this edition of Sultan Aslan Shah Cup will be the same, but this time around, Canada, Japan, Poland and Korea will be participating in the tournament, replacing the past tournament teams, namely Australia, Argentina, Ireland and England. And with that, we wrap up this edition of Midday News. Thanks for watching.